Alrighty, welcome to the stream. This is a Div G match between European Redcoats and the Legion coming up shortly. Uh, this is going to be a fight for European Redcoats to try and take first place, uh, first place in Division G. They are currently eight points behind. I think they won their 1v1 though, so that's seven points. So they need seven points to take first place in the division. It's actually really close. The top four teams in the division are only separated by a total of eight points. So 172 for Redcoats, and then Freebooters 176, uh, Junior Ridiculous Drops 179, and Trips Wild 180. Should be an interesting match. Both teams are in the lobby. Redcoats are locked. First map is Frozen City Domination. Only 10 minutes on the clock. I've had some audio problems in previous casts, so I hope you can hear this. If you can't, then you'll have to let me know. Alright, both teams are locked. We're going to get straight into the action. Cold map, 5v5, domination, I expect a brawl. You can play receive on this, but I think in Div G we'd probably expect a brawl. So let's find out. It's going to be fast and frantic. Fleet command, coming in. Capture the target area and engage any hostiles. Take a quick look at builds. Oh, Wooly in a cheetah. Titan, Vapor Eagle, PPCs, okay. Lord Arbiter, small pulse brawler. Carleth, small pulse brawler. Medium. Okay, that's a that's a kind of tradey thing. Brawl. Brawl. Brawl more brawl. And kind of mixed. We're a quarter of the way there. Keep it up. Okay, that's kind of interesting. The Legion are bringing some tradey mechs it seems. They're not going all in for the brawl and uh, they are circling outside of the circle at the moment trying to find a good position I guess. Meanwhile over here the redcoats are inside the circle. They've only got 15 seconds left. They need to be really careful and get out of the circle if they can. Otherwise, they're going to lose a ton of points, and this match is going to be over really quickly. Command is happy to hear of your success and achievements on the surface. Okay, that was really stupid. I'm sorry, Redcoats. He should have got out the circle, <laughs> or well, he got stuck on some scenery. Maybe I'm not sure, but 
they got they took one point for that. I mean that's just a complete waste. But it is what it is. So no real point looking at the damage. I mean Titan got a little bit. He scratched someone. Um, the Legion ran around outside the circle. Redcoats took it, and uh, yeah, that's all she wrote. So, technically a win for Redcoats. Uh, zero kills for either side. Shame about that. But lessons learned. Uh, the team uh, I was playing in Black Omens did something similar. Accidentally took the circle when we didn't mean to. All right, next map, Emerald Vale, Domination. Glad they're having a laugh about it in chat. That does happen uh, in these matches sometimes, but all the points are in the kills. You only get a single point for actually taking the objective in this tournament. Them's the rules. Yeah, I'm guessing old Willy got stuck on scenery or something and couldn't get out of the circle fast enough. It looks like they may have realised what was going on right at the end, I'm not sure. Titan asked what happened, so maybe they didn't. Oh, old Willy says, staying away from all the walls this time. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call. So anyway, after that first drop, European Red Coast now needs six points, I believe, to take top place in Division G. They earned one point from the last drop. Hopefully they can actually get some kills, or vice versa. The Legion can get some kills on uh, Red Coats in the next drop. There was a little bit of trade in both teams, uh, I think Titan had the rival, and I'm sure I saw some kind of long, long range mech on uh, Legions. So that was interesting for me. I thought they were just going to go all out brawl. Been asked to start the timer for Redcoats. So let me check my clock.
Yeah, a few comments in uh, Twitch chat about the last drop. Oops. <laughs> yeah, definitely an oops moment. I don't want to beat them up too much though, because, uh, well, mistakes happen. All right, team one locked. Team two, five minutes. Team two are now locked. Good job. All right, let's launch. Hopefully we'll see some action this time. Fairly recent addition, this map. Kind of interesting. I'm sure you've all played it. You can uh, quite easily post some mechs on the high ground around the edges of the map. And then, of course, there is the brawl area, especially in Domination in the middle. Fleet Command, coming in. Capture the target area and engage any hostiles. Here come the teams, let's take a look at their drops, their decks. So Peregrine, Linebacker, Small Pulse, okay. Carlith, Light Machine Guns, Medium Lasers, kind of brawly. Muzz, Brawl. Oh, Woolly Brawl. And Titan, also Brawl. Nutaku, definitely brawl. Right there in large Target pulse, spotted. Orion skull. That's a good build. Dutch bear, yeah, large lasers. Okay, these guys are going a bit more long range, but it looks a bit. Uh, Wubby in a shadow cat brawl, and the action's already kicking off. Rather than looking at mechs, let's look at the action. Both teams rapidly getting into it. Redcoat's taking the majority of damage so far. That overwatch position by Dutch Bear could pay some Useful dividends here. Oh, Woolly down to 58%. Hammerfell down to 74, so is Nataku. Nataku goes down, so does Hammerfell. Oh, Woolly is also dead. Two mechs for the Legion to UK's four mechs. Titan may be going down shortly. Alright, they've just got Dutch Bear in the Kit Fox. Uh, up on the high ground. With his uh, ER large lasers, I think he's got. He definitely doesn't have the DPS to deal with this. Could have been a mistake, they they could have used the firepower down on the low ground then, but he did manage to get the kill on Titan. So they are scoring a couple of points. Looks like he's stuck on scenery now, which is a shame. 
they're just going to focus his legs. Nothing he can do about it. Okay, there you go. <laughs> he crashed. Hammerfell says he crashed. Alright, well, that's a bummer. So red coat, red coat, sir, take the drop with all five kills. The Legion managed to pick, pick up a couple of points there at least. Good for them. Let's take a quick look at the damage. Oh, Wooly, I think, went down early, so he only got 130. Titan did decently, 257. Uh, and good from the rest of the team. Dutch Bear also didn't do a great deal of damage. He crashed. He was in the kit fox on the high ground with the large lasers. Uh, didn't seem to be able to apply the damage very well though. The rest of their team did pretty good though. Yeah, fairly even damage spread. Good job both teams. All right, what's the next map? The next map is Victory Station. Another recently introduced map. Uh, I think this is based off one of the faction play maps. As you're no doubt aware, I kind of like this map. I didn't. I wasn't too keen on it to begin with, but it's grown on me over time. Taking the high ground uh, and pushing up across the central spine is always a good move. But you can also do really well from the low ground. Uh, this is once again domination. Both teams insisting on me doing a timer, not all teams do it, and uh, if they don't want it, I don't do it, because uh, I'm not a ref, so I can't actually enforce anything. Oh, is it Forest Colony?
Okay, team unlocked. Are the maps different in Division G? I'm sure it was meant to be Vitrix Station. Guess I'm mistaken. Maybe one of them has an AMD card and uh, Forest Colony is a fallback map because I believe there's some kind of bug with AMD drivers on that map or something. It turns everything a hue of pink. I'm not sure, it's just something I heard. Team one locked, team two, I think three or four minutes remaining. Okay, forest colony domination. Team 2 readied up and locked, so let's launch into the action. Okay, so I'm not really sure what to expect here. Um, could be a straight brawl push into the middle, of course. There is some scope for uh, trading on this map as well. We'll find out shortly. We'll have a look at what they've got. Fleet Command coming in. Capture the target area and engage any hostiles. Mars AC5s AC10, Daka build Nigeria. Titan Gorsi are large. It's a Peregrine, Daka. Or Woolly, Daka. And Carleth machine guns. Nut uh, Trady. Red Baron, here large, here mediums. MFL, ER mediums, clan large, pulse, okay. Part. And Wubby. Okay, a mixture of uh, trade with a couple of brawlers for uh, both teams, it seems. Carleth has uh, pushed up early into the circle with his missilings there. He's got to be careful not to get dived upon. Wubby and Dutch Bear on the high ground, it's not a bad early position to take. However, Wubby jumps down. By the looks of it, the Redcoats have uh, spread out a bit. The main push here is Muzz, Sir Peregrine and Orwoolly. Carleth, of course, holding the circle. 
And then all the way over here we've got Titan in the direwolf who's going to be trying to do some farming. Looks like they've seen... Legion have seen Titan on his own and they're going to push straight into him. Uh, Titan's going to have to back off fairly quickly. He's stuck there now. I'm guessing he's going to get picked off. Three versus one should make short work of him. Always a risky position to sit there on your own with uh, no support from your teammates. Carleth is uh, trying to support in his mislinks. He's unable to directly support, but he's doing some really good damage on the Marauder. Titan goes down. Nataku in the Marauder is heavily damaged. He's going to die shortly. Carleth is now in trouble. He came over to support Titan, but he dove a bit too deep. And now he's legged. And now he's dead. Okay, interesting play from the Legion. Really good job there in shutting Titan down and taking one of uh, Redcoat's lights. So only three Redcoats remaining on the high ground. Looks like Muzz is jumping up as well. question is, will Legion be able to knock them off that high ground? Have they got any jump jets? Are they just going to trade from the low ground? Looks like they are trading. Oh, well he taking a bit of damage. Dutch Bear did jump up for a little bit, but he's uh, jumped back down. Could go either way. Still, I think, just about. Wabi doing some harassment. Allowing uh, Red Baron and Dutch Bear to move into this position here. They can. Can they fit through there in their mix? I'm not sure, maybe. Red Baron in the execution is going to give it a good go. Both of them taking turns to get some shots on old Woolly, who's heavily damaged now. Redcoat's slowly being picked off on the high ground. Take a look at our Woolies open CT in one of his legs. If they can focus him down, only two mechs to remaining to deal with. But looking at it, Legion are all heavily damaged themselves. Could go either way still, just about. Okay, or will he finally goes down? Nataku's still alive on 13% health, that's quite impressive. Maz is now being focused by the Shadow and the Executioner. Dutch Bear doing some pop tarting now, so Peregrine all on his own. He's still got some armor left, so he could pick off one kill. Maybe get Wubby. At 
but he's not. He's just uh, giving Med Red Baron his, his back. Target overload. Too many people to deal with. And he finally goes down. All right, the Legion have taken their first win on the third drop. Well played, the Legion. You all saw what happened. Uh, Titan was out in Zimbabwe on his own. And as soon as the Legion spotted that, they ran in and swamped him, which is a really good move. And then they took out uh, Red Coat's Light as well, who came to, who came to support. That was a good move. Well played, Legion. Let's take a look at the damage. Red Bear in 700 damage, 3 kills, nice. Hammerfell 656, and pretty good damage spread from the rest of the team. Redcoats Titan did 471 before he went down, considering he went down, I think, first or... Yeah, he was the first mech to go down on the Redcoat side, so he did quite well with his damage there. Uh, Carleth also did pretty well. And even damage spread from the rest of Redcoat's team. Excellent, that was a fun match. All right. I believe now it's time for a team swap as well as a map change. So let's get the uh, team swap over first. Grimplexus is the map. And uh, the mode is going to be Assault. Moving up the tonnage now, tonnage limit for this drop is 400 tonnes. As you saw on the uh, the last drop, Forest, that was a 350 tonne limit, and uh, they definitely tried to do a more tradey deck, which uh, was an interesting result looking at the, that match. Yeah, that was good, that. I like, uh, like what Legion did. Grimplex is 500, 400 tons, yeah. And it's assault, not domination. So the objective is raid, very rarely an issue on, on assault, especially in comp. And especially with these rules where all the points are in the kills.
Team one readied up. And locked. Team two now on the five minute timer. Okay, back to the map. Grim Plexus definitely lends itself to trading lots of uh, nice high ground spots with decent cover for the long ranges. 400 tons, so you've definitely got scope to bring. Well, you could bring three assaults if you wanted to and a couple of 50 tonner mediums. That would work well. Or you can try and surprise the enemy and just go all out brawl. It'll be, be interesting to see. After that last drop, I reckon they're probably going to go for trading on this map, but we'll find out. Team 2 locked as well. All right, let's go. Take a look at the mix. Nut and a Warhammer 2C large pulse lasers. Okay, that's medium range. Dutch Bear. Medium pulse light machine guns. Medium pulse. Bubby. Medium range, yeah. Laser vomit. Red Bear in here, yeah, large laser. And Hammerfell LB2s. Oh, that looks nasty. Odd Arbiter, small pulse brawl. Oh, Willy, small pulse brawl. Carleaf, small pulse brawl. It's Peregrine, small pulse. And Titan, small pulse. Okay, looks like Redcoats are going brawl. And uh, the Legion are taking a kind of medium to, yeah, medium range deck. A bit more tradey. Be interesting to see who prevails. So Redcoats will be taking a direct route to get onto their opponents as quickly as possible. Uh, it'll be up to Legion to get some early scouting done and then adapt. I mean, they've got some decent firepower. I'm not sure they've got the DPS, though, to uh, deal with an all-out brawl push. So they've definitely spotted Redcoats now. They can see that they're all balled up and pushing in. I'm not entirely sure what they should be doing, maybe backpedalling into open ground. At this point, looks like they are backpedalling now. Three, uh, three fat guys here. Dutch Bear re repositioning to support, good, good. And 
the action kicks off, Lord Arbiter taking early damage. Looks like they're focusing fire fairly well on him. If they keep it up, he, they can... Uh, he's in a gargoyle, so they really don't want to let him in too close. However, they've lost sight of him. Carleth now pushing onto Nataku. He goes down very quickly. Hammer fell furiously backpedaling, as furious as you can in a direwolf, they're not the quickest of mechs. Lord Arbiter is going to go down to the direwolf, incredible firepower. They just leave him alone to farm here, and he's doing a good job of it. However, Legion are down to two mechs, and uh, everyone's pushing on this direwolf now. As powerful as it is, looks like they're going for legs, he's not going to last very long. Okay, good brawl push from uh, Redcoats there. Really solid. The Legion saw it coming and they did try and uh, adapt, but... Yeah, he saw how it worked out. Hammerfell in the Direwolf, knocking, uh, clocking up 800 damage, very good. Fairly even spread from the rest of the team. And also fairly even spread from Redcoats. Uh, Lord Arbiter was focused down early, went down for 52 damage, but he did his job. He tanked the damage on the way in, allowed the rest of his team to get in and finish the job. Well played both teams. Good job. And we're on to the final drop of the match now, HPG Manifold Assault. Uh, this last drop is 500 tons, so essentially tonnage unlimited. Um, because you can take 500 tonners and it's a five man match. It'll be interesting to see if both teams take advantage of the full tonnage limit. Uh, a lot of the matches I've watched on this map have been uh, mechs basically taking the uh, high ground around the outside circle of the map and trading across it. And then maybe when one team has a clear advantage over the other, there's some kind of push. Lots of really good mechs you can take on this map. If you're good with ERPPCs, I'd suggest that's the way to go because you can snapshot and quickly drop back into cover. ELA, ER large lasers are also effective, but they do require a little bit more face time. Take a quick look at the stream. Five minutes in the past. Karen says, Dubs, look at the paper doll. Yeah, I'm not usually reading the comments when I'm uh, casting, so I don't. I'm unable to take requests, I'm afraid. There is a five minute delay. 
but uh, I'll try and bear that in mind. Team 1 are locked, Team 2 on the timer. Last drop of the match. And then uh, if the team leaders are interested, I'll see if I can get them in for interviews. Okay, looks like we are going to have interviews, both teams now ready and locked, so we're going to jump straight into the last drop. Minus 69 degrees, I didn't realise this map with this was that cold. I suppose it is in the vacuum of space. Uh, but there is a star. Uh, so this is the hot side of the planet, I don't know, whatever. It's science fiction, who cares? What we do care about is big fat stampy robots. Stompy robots even, shooting each other. Uh, red coats, die wolves, all die wolves. And a mixture from the Legion. Let's take a look and see what the loadouts are like. Dutch bear, large pulse, mm, yeah, medium, so that's medium range. Okay, looks like he's going low ground. Hammerfell, four gorse on the Kodiak 3. Wabby ER peeps and. Some brawl, okay. Nataku, here, gorse. Red bearing, gorse, here, large. Titan, here, large, gorse. Carleaf, gorse, here, large. AC2 for Peregrine. Another AC2 mech for Orwoolly. And Muzz, also with AC2. Okay, see so the Legion are kind of doing a mixed deck here. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. What I'm really surprised by is Redcoats pushing on the low ground here. I thought they'd all go high up on the wall. They're not doing that. Only Carleaf. And uh, Titan, who's already taken some damage there, <laughs> losing his initial trades. Over on Legion's side, they've got f three people up on the high ground. This is kind of a bit more what I was expecting. And Wubby in his uh, spirit bear. And Dutch uh, in the low ground here, pushing towards the middle. I mean, the Legion's positioning is pretty good. They've got really good overwatch over their two low ground mechs.
Muzz may be a little bit too far forward here. Uh, if Wubby can get in on him in the uh, Spirit Bear, he could pick an early kill. Titan down to 82% armor now. I'm going to have to take a look at his paper doll in a sec. But I just want to follow the action in the middle here for a second. Something could kick off very shortly. Yeah, Dutch now pushing, pushing on the Peregrine. Those direwolves kick out an amazing amount of damage. Dutch backing off in the Executioner. Probably not a bad idea. So uh, those direwolves are tough to kill. Tyne with a torso open. Not too bad because he's got a ton of structure, but he needs to keep an eye on that. Oh, Wally over here. Also with an open torso. The Legion's still relatively fresh up here on the high ground, so it seems they're winning their trades at the moment. Red Baron the most heavily damaged. Looks like he's taken a strike or two, but his frontal armor's still pretty solid. So Peregrine and or Woolly are into orange armor. And they don't have the best Overwatch or, or Woolly doesn't. Legion could be picking up a couple of early kills here. Definitely going in the Legion's favor at the moment. You've only got to take a look at the relative damage to figure that out. Dutch Bear now overextending could uh, could lose his mech if he's not careful. I think he's now halved. Yeah, he is just that one mistake. Both Wubby and Dutch Bear now in trouble. Dutch Bear goes down. Wubby is now on his own in the middle. He's got very little overwatch where he is at the moment. Uh, he's facing off with a Wooly. Yeah, the Legion are starting to take some damage, but Redcoats are all heavily damaged. Muzz goes down. Wubby's about to bite the bullet. There he goes. Okay, now it's all about the traders. Red Bear in should probably stay in cover at this point. He's the most heavily damaged. Hammerfell and Nutaku can... Oh, we... is, that... is he dead? Is he... No, he's not. All right. Nutaku and Hammerfell uh, are still... Fairly decent. Hammerfell's not firing at all. Still got all his weapons. Red Bear in open CT. And Natsuku open all over. Oh, Willie and Sir Peregrine now wisely uh, staying in cover. If they expose, they're going to be picked off very quickly and they don't have much armor left. Titan up here is still in fairly decent condition.
but they're making their move. And they have very little choice because Legion are just going to stay up on there on, on the high ground. They've got no reason to drop down from there. So uh, if Redcoats want to win this, they're going to have to make a push. Oh, Woolly goes down. Nutku is heavily damaged. Red Baron also. Hammerfell's still in yellow, so he's okay. Very close match, this. Maybe the Legion with a slight advantage, I'm not sure. Oof. Titan eating some good shots there. He doesn't have to worry about uh, ammo too much once his gorse run out. He's still got his large lasers. So he can sit up there for a while, although his torsos are battered. Okay. <laughs> That's a defeat. I'm not sure for which team though, because... Oh, I see. Okay. Legion uh, lost. No, they didn't. Hang on. Yeah, Legion lost a mech at the end, so they were left with one alive. And Redcoats had two. Close match. Close final drop. Well played both teams. I like it. A uh, quick look at the damage. Red Baron 793, Hamfell 663, Wubby 605, and then two 400s from the Redcoat side. Uh, Peregrine did good damage 714, Muzz 600, or Woolly 528, Carly 529, and Titan got some farming done there. 975, very good. Wow, that was hectic. Some really good drops there from both teams. Oh, that's interesting. Kieran said, uh, in a PM to me, the deck might be illegal for red coats. They used six direwolves, and I believe that might be true. There is a, is, did they use six? There's a limit of five. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not sure what that means. That may mean they forfeit the entire match, or not. I'm not sure. Gosh, I hope not. Yeah, I have to double check the stream uh, at the end of this and, uh, well, I can get one of the rest to do it.
All right, looks like we're going to be doing some interviews, so uh, we'll have people turning up shortly. Here's Titan, I'll drag him down in a second. So if you want to hang around for that, please do. Hey Titan, how you doing? Hey, yeah, not too bad. Whew, glad it's over. Yeah, that was hectic. Some some really good fights there, actually. Yeah, it was a bit funny, that one. I'm not sure we didn't play at all very well. Um, and there's something to declare straight away, so I may as well say it. We just noticed that we had one more Die Wolf than we should, so we used four on high HPG Manifold, and we also used one on, I believe, it was on Forest Colony? So we had a yeah, I, I actually didn't pick up on it, but someone PM'd me uh, to say the same thing, so... Yeah. I'm going to have to pass that off to uh, the referees and see what they say about it. I'm sure it wasn't yeah. done mal maliciously or oh, deliberately. Oh, absolutely not. No, we had um, we had one of our pilots who didn't have the direwolf. So, uh, sorry, we didn't have a Kodiak 3, which we'd selected for Manifold. And at the last minute, we had some uh, piloting problems this, this week. And they were swapped into whatever they had, 100 tons, which was a direwolf. And it just flew under the radar and was squeezed in. So apologies. Happy to replay that particular one if that's necessary, but yeah, I uh, wanted to declare that straight away as an honest mistake. Yeah, fair enough, um, if it's an honest mistake. <clears throat> yeah, we were, Hammerfell, uh, welcome. We were just talking about um, Redcoats brought six direwolves in total, which is illegal in the rules, so we're going to pass that off to the referee and see what they say about it. He's just offering to replay that drop if you want to. Um, that's up to you, I'm not a referee myself, so... If you want to come to a gentleman's agreement, you can. Otherwise, we'll just pass it off to the referees and see what they say. Otherwise, yep. very good drops. Good match. I enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to talk through, we certainly can. Um... Sure, yeah. I just wanted to apologise for that, Hammerfell. We had a last-minute change, and we were supposed to have a Kodiak 3 on Manifold, and it was swapped into a, a Dire Wolf at the last minute because that's the only mechanism Pilot had. So, uh, happy to replay the the drop if that's necessary but uh oh, yeah sure. it was a completely honest mistake we didn't realize it until right at the end where oh, sure. uh, someone had mentioned it but yeah well well played you guys played really well you caught us by surprise on a couple of the uh the drops there uh maybe we could start with frozen city well obviously that was not the starter was it <laughs> we didn't see you and um one of our mechs got stuck in the center circle couldn't get out on some rocks and so um that was one just by winning and the domination circle, which was not not what we wanted at all, and I'm sure it wasn't what you wanted either. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm real quick talking with my co uh, co captain and see what he wants to do here. Um, okay. I think we're probably fine, but let me let me wait for one sec here. Yeah, we're happy to do whatever you want. Okay, uh, and also if uh, dubious, you can drag down um our team strategist there, warrior painter. Or he's Red Baron and uh, Mech Warrior. Uh, we also brought him over because he developed most of our strategies for today's drops. Okay, welcome, Warrior. Warrior Painter. Thank you. Oh, I need to fix my name. So to uh, to all of you watching on stream, there is a little bit of drama here. We're, we're just going to wait and see what uh, the Legion want to do. We may have one more drop coming up. Let's see. Otherwise, um, yeah, that first drop on Frozen was, uh, well, it is what it was. Um, you pushed into the circle, and I guess you didn't see the timer going down, and then all Woolly got stuck on scenery. Oh, we saw it going down. It was about 20 seconds to go. Um, and I asked everyone to get out of the circle, but uh, Woolly couldn't manage to do it. He, I think he jump jetted out of the, tried to get jump jet out of the circle and got stuck on some rocks as can be the case, right? And we just had to watch agonizingly as the timer expired. But we saw three of their mechs um, moving up through Hotel 6, Golf 6, into Golf 7. Piranha, I think, two pit foxes. We, we didn't see the other two, so we thought they might be somewhere near the circle. But um, yeah, it was just one of those unfortunate things, sadly. And suddenly realized then that, you know, if, if every single match or every single game ended up like that, we might actually not finish first in the division, which, you know, which, uh, which was what we were pushing for uh, in this particular match. We, we were hoping to try and finish first. I think hopefully that's what we've done, but um, yeah, it, was, it was literally a non-starter. I think I managed to get 20 damage out in that first game 
and that was pretty much it. Uh, no, no shots fired. What were you guys trying to do, uh, Hammerfell and Red Bear? And so, Bear? so that drop. Oh, we thought you guys were in a here. Let me pull up the map real quick. Um. Yeah, so we were we were our goal there uh, was to kind of have our lights pull up in the Fox Six, uh, kind of do a little bit of scouting there, figure out where you guys were coming from, uh, and then pull back to Golf Seven where we had our assaults coming in. Um, once we realized that you guys had kind of gone a more pokey snipe comp, our goal was to then kind of move around with Echo Seven, and we assumed that you would be sniping from like Echo Five, Echo Six, and like kind of push in, you know, and flank you guys there. Um, Looking you know, at the replay there after the match, I realized that you guys had all gone Fox 4, and so it would have just been turned into a slight rotato potatoing around. Uh, so yeah. that would have been a bit interesting. But yeah, no, we, we were trying to flank into you guys there, and uh, we were not positioned to get in the circle. And so you guys timed down. We're like, uh, I guess we're just going to time out in this first drop, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we weren't trading there at all. We had two guys set up to skirmish. One of them was me. And then we had um, a flanking group of storm crows that had gone up to Fox Four were were lying in wait for you, essentially. But um, they never got the opportunity to come down and join the fight. the The game was over before it began. Yeah. Yep. So oh well. Yeah, we're going oh, into the, kind of yeah going win. into the match. We realised we needed I think seven points to win the division on tie breaks. So suddenly we realised oh we've only got one point from this game. Oh. We we still we still might not do it, uh. So we went into Emerald Vale. Maybe it's a good time to go into this one. I, mean, I must say, I mean, what you guys did there was the exact hard counter to our strength. You had a gun line set up in Delta Four, um, uh, which caught us massively by surprise because we were actually doing a flanking maneuver with four linebackers through Delta Four, Delta Five, to try and come behind you in Echo Four, uh, and just couldn't believe that you'd chosen that exact strategy to counter us because it was the only thing that would hard counter our strategy and um not quite sure what your strategy was actually was it uh was it a gun line in delta 4 yeah yeah okay. it was a gun line in delta 4 um, why, why did you choose that particular strategy because we found it was the best thing to counter like linebacker storm crow rush on that map starting from that side okay yeah, we'd begun to do some preliminary skew, scrims with some of the other teams we'd already faced um, and playing versus them. Um, you, we'd, we'd found that kind of setting up on that hill gives us nice cover, uh, really nice line of sight if you guys do push around like the way you did. Um, and so it, it just gives us a very nice line of sight, the just kind of firing line, you know, like we were trying to do from up there and just flap you as you come in. Yeah, it gives us kind of a kill box. Um, we unfortunately didn't. We had a plan to pull back to make the choke point smaller, but unfortunately, uh, we just started pulling back too late. Um, because we had, we'd scrimmed against, uh, I can't remember who it was, and they lined back a rush, and that plan actually won us five to nothing. Uh huh. So, against the linebacker rush. So, and we thought that would probably be what, what was played. Yeah, we decided that route sort of, uh, Try and catch you by surprise, but it didn't. Of course, you were no, completely we ready were. for it. So hats, hats off to you. Um, yeah, but it did. It did go our favor. Our guys were a bit jittery on the approach, so our push kind of stalled a couple of times, and we all sort of went in in dribs and drabs. But uh, we got the job done. Yeah. It wasn't very pretty. It was very messy. Uh, it wasn't. It was very messy it. both sides. Yeah. Yeah. We, we uh, screwed up uh, our pullback, like I said, and uh -huh. yeah, it, it didn't go as planned. <laughs> yeah. Um. I wasn't sure if you had uh, a mech in the circle there in Echo 4. We had um, a Viper in Echo nope. 3, Echo 4. But you didn't have anything in the circle? Nope. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, we, we were playing the fully, you know, it's it's one of those ones that we realized um, you're going into the, the, the issue with the circle on this is, you know, like you find on drop one, uh, we feel it's better to call the enemy team's bluff that they're actually winning, willing to win by circle out uh, and lose out on points on the kills than actually contest it. Because uh, mm -hmm. contesting it generally forces us into a bad position, so we're like, all right, if if they want to lose those points, um, 
just give up the circle. Like it's it's one point. It's nothing that huge. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it would have been probably a little nice to drop one to actually get into some combat there. But by the time that we you know come up with, hey, maybe we should try and stop that circle. Actually, we maybe want to try and do a little bit of brawling. Um, we were already way out of range to try and stop that. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we didn't anticipate you would do that at all. So, um, I think. Uh, well, that was, yeah, that really caught us by surprise. I must say. Um, and we started thinking someone had access to our map stress at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, hang on a minute. How, why would they do that? But uh, yeah, it makes complete sense now you've explained it. Uh, so yeah, really well done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next one went really well for you guys. Um, so I, I was set up there in India 8 to trade down that lane, and I could see you guys had pushed through Hotel 6 with quite a number of your mechs. Um, and I made the call for our night gears to get on the hill, and I was hoping they would shoot you from behind as you were pushing me. But I think you guys just closed the distance so quickly that you took me down pretty quick. And then, um, yeah, we were just ineffective at being able to kill your mechs, essentially. So you completely outplayed us on this one. So that was a really good one from you guys. Thank you. We we uh, actually expected something entirely different, to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, all the scrims we'd played on this map, um, we're always ended up in Orion Brawl. Okay, so yeah. we took something that could beat Orion Brawl by taking two executioners. Um, and uh, yeah, so when it, when we heard our scouts call out uh, Night Gyres and a lone Direwolf, we we're kind of like, uh, rush the Direwolf? <laughs> yeah, no, the, the yeah. second that yeah. Direwolf came up by itself, it was like, uh, everyone being Lime just, like, suicide that Direwolf down. At that point, yep. we should have an easy 4v5. All right, I've got oh, some... Hammer was... Sorry to interrupt, fellas. I've got some feedback from uh, one of the refs. Uh, he's basically saying that the last drop, I guess, is going to be a forfeit for um, Redcoats because that's where the crime was committed, war crimes. That's right. uh, so it's up to you guys. You can either forfeit or you can have a gentleman's agreement and replay that last drop. Completely up to you. Either way, it's not going to affect the final standings in the division. It's just whether you guys want to take another stab at that last drop. All right. Um, hmm. I, I'm actually on my lunch break at the moment. Uh, I took an extended you know lunch break to be here from my job. Um, so I'll talk with my guys real quick, but we might have to just take the forfeit just because I, I have literally like 10 minutes to get back to my job. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Coog has to do some stuff with his wife, I believe, so we don't have the guys. Okay, um, alright. It is what it is then. I, I, unless, uh, let us just check in with our guys really quick. Yeah. In case something changed. But, uh, here, I'll bounce and go... We're ready to go again, if that makes it easy for you guys. We've already discussed this before coming into the interview. All right, let me... Um, Hammer, do you want to go with me real quick and go into our comp play? They're all yeah, I think, we'll, I think we'll be right back, guys. Uh, right. So yeah, we'll be right back. So, Forest colony was uh, a really interesting one to watch you got some really good farming done early on but um, the legion spotted you off over there in Zimbabwe and uh, they all beelined in your direction I guess you kind of had a brown pants moment there <laughs> well yeah I knew that was a problem um, I, I was hoping that our night gears would be able to get into position on the hill to be able to shoot, shoot them in the back as they pushed me, but it didn't happen. I'm not quite sure why. I'd have to watch it back. Um, and also we had a mislinks. I think we just, the, the communication on the team broke down a little bit um, at that moment. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I I still managed to do a relatively respectable amount of damage, but yeah, obviously we just didn't get a kill at all. So um, that was that was very disappointing. Hmm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the guys or the time. Okay, that's completely fair. Um, let's talk for another few minutes then, if you guys want to just carry on talking for a bit, and then we'll end the stream. Sure. 
All right. Yeah, I, I'm off to take off a little bit soon here because I told my boss I'd start heading back uh, around uh, two thirty my time, which is in about six minutes or so. So I need to start heading back to my job around then. Okay. Yep, and I can I can remain after that. I've got time. Cool. So we were just talking about the forest drop. Um, I was uh, just talking to Titan about him being out on his own there in his um, direwolf, and you guys saw him fairly quickly, and then all piled on top of him. And then I think Karen came to support in his light, and he also got picked off. Maybe we could yeah. talk about that a bit. Um. So yeah, the the light coming in actually did kind of scare us because if I remember correctly, he almost took out our marauder. Uh, because our marauder Nutaku was was a little bit beat up there. I think one of his legs was down, so he was kind of lumping the rest of that uh, drop. So the light did a pretty good job of you know inflicting a good amount of damage on there that like, really could have messed us up. Um. But I think I think the main issue there, like looking at that from a tactical perspective for us, was just like we saw that dire out there, and it was immediately just like uh, we just beeline at him because he's he's so yeah. he's solo, he's alone. Uh, because we we had our uh, I think it was storm not storm uh, shadow cat jump jetting up on top of the center there, and he he had eyes on the entire rest of their team, so we knew that the dire wolf was fully isolated, and we're just like uh, rush. Yeah, and our shard was up there. I think our shard's actually the one who saw him. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, all, the, all the night gyres, and then the shadow cat saw the dire wolf, and we put two and two together, and just went, "All right, run after the dire wolf." And then uh, Red Coast had that final Alamo moment up on the high ground in the center of the map, and um, Legion, you guys were pop tarting and uh, picking them off from all angles. That was a really good one to watch. Actually, I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was. Uh... Oh, how did I put it before? It was like um, a bunch of wolves circling a treed animal. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's a good analogy, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, Fitz, too, were clan wolf loyalists, so... <laughs> um, yeah, you guys did... You, you guys really, really well on that one. You did all, all, the, all the right things, I think, to counter what we were trying to do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we, we knew right away we had to, like, get close. Just get close yeah. and we should have. we should be good. Yeah, we were we were actually expecting you guys to bring in like a Ryan brawl there, just because most of the teams we were scrimming versus just were like Orion's all the way, um, and like the Orion brawl was really kicking our ass in a lot of the the scrims we were doing, um, and so we our our current strat where was devised to kind of counter that because we were, you know, anticipating you know, something really really brawly, uh, just because that's what we faced in scrims. Yep. So we redid our mechs at the last second to counter that with the mechs we had and uh just have to also work for this yeah we tried to do something different on this one it worked in a scrim but it didn't work against you guys so i'd have to look at it back i, th I think the night gear should have been able to get on that hill to stop you guys pushing me but I i'd have to look back to see the timings of that i'm not quite sure um because you guys I... were all out in the open in india 8 i guess or india 7 at the point that you were pushing my position and so there would have been a lot of back shots to be had but i just i haven't seen the footage to be able to make a decision but yeah you just did just you just outplayed us basically thank okay. you uh, thank you very much yeah really great job that one so next one was uh grim plexus that was basically a brawl versus kind of medium range tradey yeah so uh red you want to go over a strap for that map yeah yep um this actually starts with a mistake on my part. Uh, I set up our stuff to be the other team. So the original idea was to, to stake up at Hamburger Hill and then leave me, the supernova, behind and our guys to push down. And then at the last second, I facepalmed and realized, oh, we're on the other side. Um, so we weren't set up great for that side. Um, and yeah, the whole idea was just to have the supernova on Overwatch and then some brawler boys, the rest of them, and just do our best to brawl down one at a time. But your uh, gargoyle rush <laughs> for coming from that side defeats our plan pretty pretty <laughs> well, I think. We yeah, so, just can't um, handle that speed. Yeah, our, our scout spotted you guys around Fox 7 fairly early while we were still pulling up uh, Golf 8. Uh, at which point um, I started calling out to the guys like, hey, let's pull range. We want to pull back. We'll shoot them as they come into us. We want to we want to give ourselves as much range here as possible. Um, just because we were set up for you know, for that long range you know, skirmish. And then with a couple of rollers to move in while we did that, 
Um, and it was like, all right, we, we need to get a range ASAP here because we, we couldn't for all you guys. And then when you got on top of this, it was kind of like, all right, uh, this could go either way, but we're probably, we probably got screwed here. <laughs> yep. Well, at this point in the match, we were convinced you had access to our map strat. So we were, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, I, all the guys were talking in Discord and like, they they know that they, like that was that's not a coincidence that they pushed me on that last match in the last game. So I, I said, right, okay, I'm just gonna call a strat at the beginning here and I'm I'm not even gonna draw on the map strat, I'm just gonna call it at the beginning. So we changed actually our strat, although it doesn't really change much if you've got a five gargoyle push. So rather than we were actually planning to go around the outside of the map to go on the Charlie line, then three Delta Nine, Echo Nine, Fox Nine, Golf Nine and sweep your sniping hill uh before we would brawl ah. the rest of you. Um, but we, I decided to change that at the last minute because, well, because of what I've just said. So we pushed into Fox 7 and then um, pushed through Fox 8 and then ended up brawling yeah. you where you were. So, I mean, it's that quite different. That would have diff- worked um, even better, honestly, <laughs> because you would uh, have just killed me alone. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we probably should have stuck with the plan. But, you know, I think uh, all the guys are a bit weary at the end of the comp, right? So it's been five weeks. Um, so we just wanted to to get the match done and win win the division um sure, sure. uh so so yeah we managed to get it done it's, it's very difficult actually to receive a five gargoyle push um I, I would like to say it's probably impossible but i'm sure someone out there probably thinks differently so but it's incredibly difficult um particularly if you can close the distance and get get short range very quickly so i agree we're pleased I, yeah I pleased to right. get that one under the belt yeah um so, on to the last one, shall we? On to the manifold. Yeah, so that's where we committed our war crime. Took one um, direwolf too many. Yeah, let's talk about that in isolation, because it was actually a really good drop. There was some excellent trading and some really interesting positioning, and actually at the end of the match, uh, it was super, super close, like down to the second. Uh-huh. Very much so. Yep, and there was actually a miscommunication at the very end that caused me to die we were um we were talking and i thought i heard that whoever was the ac2 wolf who shot me from below was behind us <laughs> so i thought oh it's just the guy in the distance i think i can kill him and so i started peeking and then the ac2 dire got me at the last second it was yeah it was a good job on you guys yeah, it was pretty close. You, you. I th- how many traders did you have? We're, you had three. Uh, three. Yeah, we only had two really, and we had three, uh, eight UAC two builds on the Direwolf Alpha, which is I think the best center torso to run that build on. Uh, they were holding particular ramps in the middle to try and exploit their shorter range from the Gauss and um, large laser dyers. Originally, we did have a Kodiak selected for one of our pilots in the center, but um, we had a few problems selecting pilots this week and so one of the guys didn't have a Kodiak so we put him in a direwolf not thinking and obviously we were bound to have taken one more direwolf than normal so we're completely happy to forfeit that one it doesn't change uh you know uh what was a great match I think and you, play, you guys played really yeah. well and it doesn't I, I think it doesn't change the division placings at all so I don't think anyone's got any hard feelings about that no. But yeah, it was super yeah. close. I mean, yeah, my right torso was open very, very quickly and my dyer's right-sided, so I was having to hide quite a bit so that we could try and trade a little bit later on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, very, very, very close. Very, very close. Yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was a good game. Um, this map was actually difficult for us to prep for because of the day and time, because uh-huh. we didn't have access to the one of the people I pre- would have preferred to have in here to have as another trader up top. And um, the, we, we had limited assaults, unfortunately. We're not, we're a brand new comp team. This is our first competition. We're really a uh, um, faction play unit. So our mechs are kind of limited. <laughs> ah, that was the um, four, Kodi- four Gauss Kodiak that we saw in this. Pretty common in faction play, isn't it? I think both of your teams are new to comp, aren't they? I, mean, I know you've had a little bit of experience tying with the, the last tournament. Yeah. So, did you yeah. did both of your teams enjoy it? Are you planning to field teams for uh, 
championship series. Yes. We we had a blast. Yeah, I think I think everyone enjoyed it from the red coat side as well. Um, championship, yeah, we've got. To, I think we've got to get a team of eight. So yeah, I think there will be a lot of people who want to get involved in that. Um, I'm going to have to take a little bit of time off, a bit battle weary, but um, yeah, I'm sure I'll be up for it. Yeah, we'll absolutely be back. Um, at the very end, even though you know we you know technically lost that last one, it was just a bunch of hooping and hollering like. Everyone was happy. We, we, this was our. This is actually our best drop, um, in the entire tournament. Or this set of drops was our best round. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had a great time. Yeah, you guys played really well. Thank you. You too. Okay, well, we'll conclude on that. Uh, thank you both for coming along. And thank you uh, for excellent play from both teams. Day. Really good job. Thanks, thanks you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Till next time. All right, that's it. Thank you all for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it and good night.